So whether you've made considerations in your winemaking for malactic fermentation or not, it is going to happen and it's going to affect your wines. So whether you're after a sharp tart feel or a nice creamy feel, depending on what kind of wine you're making, this is happening in your wines, whether you want it to or not, and potentially the wrong way. So this video is designed to kind of just steer you in the right direction and control the process to get you the result that you're after. So what is malactic fermentation? It is the fermentation of malic acid into lactic acid. Now the first one, malic acid, is the uh, sensation or taste in wine. So you might want this for like a green apple wine, but that uh, it's, it's exactly that, that green apple, that tart uh, punchiness. That's, think of that as malic acid. Whereas the lactic acid uh, will give a wine like a buttery, uh, creamy texture. So often more desirable in like a nice red wine, whereas the malic acid in like a fruit wine might be what you're after. So which wines go through malactic fermentation? Specifically, reds typically are the most common, like a Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Pinot Noir. Uh, they're essential for like uh, mouthfeel and stability. Although not nearly as common in a white wine, uh, Chardonnay is probably the most famous example of a white wine that goes through malactic fermentation. So wines that avoid malactic fermentation where your desire is that crisp, uh, clean mouthfeel is like a, a Sauvignon Blanc or another example, uh, which I believe is the one I'm holding here, is a, a Riesling. So how do we control malactic fermentation? Well, there's essentially there's two different ways that pertain to me, the home wall winemaker, and you probably if you're watching this. The one is to desire malactic fermentation and to do this, you can either choose a yeast like 71B, which uh, converts a lot of the malic acid, or you can specifically add a different strain of bacteria. I'm gonna try to pronounce this here. Uh, Onococcus oni? <laughs> Somebody might be able to do that better than me. So that strain will specifically target that malic acid and convert it to a lactic acid to get you that buttery mouthfeel that you're after. Okay, so if you're making a Riesling or a wine that you want that uh, sharp tart feel to go through, uh, you do have a couple of options. And if you don't do either one, you are uh, you have a fairly high likelihood of some kind of MLF happening inside of that bottle. So the first one is pretty easy, mechanical filtration. You run it through a really small micron filter and hopefully that pulls out all the bacteria. Then when the wine goes into the sterilized bottles, hopefully we get nothing going on inside of there. The second method is to just add sulfites. Now there is a calculation for the exact amount of sulfites to add but just a good general rule of thumb is before you put your wine into the bottles and right at the tail end add some more sulfites. The general rule of thumb with Camden tablets uh, which is a sulfite is one tablet per gallon of wine and that should help you uh, avoid any MLF inside the bottle. If you're wondering what lactic fermentation or MLF looks like inside of the bottle, I'm going to do my best here to get this on video. But if you look at the neck, it typically shows up however the bottle was sitting on the bottom side of that bottle as kind of like a cloudy, um, like a slight flowery maybe texture. And then when you pick up your bottle of wine to go upright, and you end up with this stuff coming off the sides of your bottle. It goes to the bottom. can end up with like a sediment type thing uh, after you've cleared and totally filtered your wines. Anyway, that's uh, kind of what MLF looks like inside of a bottle. Now, although malactic fermentation might happen inside of your bottle, it's best not to bank on that happening. And the professional winemakers, what they're doing is they're inoculating with that strain of bacteria. You can pick up your own for doing this stuff at home. Or like I said, you can use that 71B variety of yeast to get you the desired result as well. So hopefully that helps demystify malactic fermentation for you guys. I know for myself at home, um, I'm already putting it into practice and I'm trying to control uh, which flavor I want in my future wines, whether I want that tartness or 
that smooth buttery feel and uh, I guess experimentation and time will let me know kind of which applies better to what kind of wine. Since I'm still learning, I'm not an expert. If the video is helpful, leave me a comment down below or if you have tips uh, on your own practice on how to utilize malactic fermentation in winemaking, I'd also like to hear from you down below.